Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jian Rui. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm going to present work on integration of fast alignment and maximum likelihood methods for electron subtomogram averaging and classification. Our research focuses on macromolecules, which are the units carrying out the function of biological pathways. Knowing the native structure of macromolecules in the cytoplasm is a necessary step to the study of various biological pathways. Due to data acquisition limits, it has been extremely difficult to know the native structure of macromolecules. Cryo electron tomography is a revolutionary technique for imaging the native 3D structure of a single cell. Basically, a sample is free so quickly that no crystal is formed. Electron beams are passed through the sample to get a 2D projection image from the sample. And projection images are taken through a tube series by rotating the sample. And the 3D image of, of the sample can be reconstructed by the series of 2D projection images. And after reconstructing the tomogram, particle picking methods such as difference of Gaussian can be applied to the tomogram to extract subtomograms from a tomogram. A subtomogram is a small cubic volume that contains one particle, which is usually a macromolecule. There are three challenges for structural recovery from subtomograms. The first one is orientation. Cellular particles can adopt all different orientations in 3D space. For example, those IgG antibodies, you can see their orientation is all different. The second challenge is signal-to-noise ratio. Subtomograms are of very low signal-to-noise ratio. For example, on the right is the slices of a mammalian ribosome experimental data, and on the left is the ground truth. As you can see, like the noise level of the experimental data is so high that you can barely see the ribosome, especially its fine details. And we have the third challenge, missing wedge effects. Since the sample cannot be rotated like full 180 degrees, the reconstructed tomogram will have missing, will have distortions due to the missing wedge effect. This picture shows that the missing wedge effect at different tilt angles. And you can see the more complete the, the tilt angle range, the lesser distortion. And usually the tilt angle range is from minus 60 to plus 60 degrees, which is shown here. And you can see the, as compared to the true structure, the, there's already strong distortion on the horizontal features. And for successful reco structural recovery, reference spray averaging methods are needed. As shown in the picture, like N subtomographs are transformed, meaning rotated and translated, and averaged to here to reduce the noise and missing wedge effects. And when there are multiple classes of subtomograms, the task becomes like reference spray classification. As shown, N subtomograms are transformed clustered and averaged into k different classes, and in this example, k equals two. And our method is motivated by the limitation of existing methods. There are two major approaches. The first one is maximum likelihood-based method, which optimizes the probability of observing the entire subtomogram data given a data model. This data model defines the subtomogram X as the rigid transformation of the true structure A plus the Gaussian noise. And this method uses the expectation maximization algorithm for updating the, the parameters. And it requir requires exhaustive scanning in 60 parametric space of rigid transformations, which is in principle, computationally infeasible. And in practice, adaptive oversampling method is used, but this may degenerate the search for 
for local maximum instead of global maximum mu. And the second approach is first alignment based method. It basically optimizes a correlation score between a subtomogram X and the uh, average A. And the correlation score defined here is essentially a Pearson correlation defined in Fourier space. And this, this is done by using the first rotational matching algorithm, which searches suboptimal rigid transformations using local maximum under constraints. And this method is fast, but not very robust to low signal to noise ratio and missing wedge effects. Therefore, we propose an integration of the two approaches. Since the maximum likelihood based method uses integrals of probability functions to update par parameters, we approximate the exhaustive scanning using suboptimal transformations obtained by fast alignment. And furthermore, we weight each suboptimal transformation using their Voronini weights in 60 space, space. And the computational, uh, the computation of Voronini weights is illustrated in the picture. So each, 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 each transformation is a vector of length six, which is three translational parameters and three rotational parameters. And for example, if we sample 100 points and 20 points are closest to the transformation one, the weight will be 0.2. And here is the algorithm of our method. First, we initialize the model parameters uh, A, alpha, sigma, and xi from the distribution of the tomogram S. And for M iterations, we compute a list, which in our example is 36 suboptimal rigid transformations using fast alignment and compute their Voronini weights using Monte Carlo sampling. And we update alpha, the proportion of particles belonging to different classes. And if it's an averaging task, alpha will always be one because there's only one class. And then we update sigma, the standard deviation of the Gaussian noise. We update she, the standard deviation of the translation parameters, which in the model follows the 3D Gaussian distribution. And finally, we update A, the underlying line true structure, which is also the subtomogram average. And we update all the parameters to the, uh, for the next iteration. And usually, the, the average can be converged in less than 20 iterations. And here are the parameter updating equations. And for technical details and full duration, please refer to our paper and Sherry's paper in 2009. Okay, here I throw some results. So we sim simulated 200 grow yield structure with random rotation and translation. And at low signal to noise ratio 0 0.003, the, our method, which is shown in the middle, successfully recover the structure as compared to the true structure, but the first alignment uh, recovers some torn pieces. And at a high missing wedge, which is from minus to plus 45 degree, our method recovers the structure as compared to the true structure here, but the first alignment, the recovered structure is highly distorted as <coughs> you can see here. And for the averaging of experimental subtomograms, uh, as shown on the top, our method recovers the more details of the ripsum structure as compared to the fast alignment. This is the tobacco mosaic virus, which has a 17-fold rotation symmetry, which makes the fast alignment prone to the missing white effects. And our method recovers a uh, a symmetric structure, whereas the fast alignment does not. For classification, we have a data set of about 800 GRO EL and GRO ES subtomograms. And these two structures are very similar, as you can see here. The GRO EL does not have a, like a, a height on the top, but the, but the GRO EL, GRO EL less structure has this small head like a bullet. And both of the two previous methods performed well on this data set. 
Therefore, we substant substantially decrease the subtomogram number to by randomly selecting only 400 subtomograms from this, the original data site. And compared to the true structure which is shown on the left, our method successfully recovers the both the grow EL and grow EL, grow EL structure, especially the bullet height here. And the first alignment at such a low number of subtomograms does not fully recover the structure. And we also show the cross-correlation between the structures. And our method achieved a cross-correlation of 0.87 and 0.78. And first alignment only achieved a correlation of 0.4 and 0.24. And the maximum likelihood-based method, and uh, which rep in their original paper, and reported on the original 780 subtomogram data site, their method achieved a cross correlation of 0.88 and 0.81. So our method achieved a comparable result with, with the maximum likelihood based method, but with significantly less number of subtomograms. We also compared the computing time as shown in table one. So to summarize, our method is slower than first alignment, which is expected, but takes less iterations to converge. As you can see, first alignment takes like, like 11 iterations, and our method takes like only 10 iterations. And our method is two to five times faster than rely. Which is the which implements the maximum likelihood based method using their default parameter. To conclude, we propose an integration of two subtomogram averaging and classification methods. Our method is more robust to noise and missing YG effect as compared to the first alignment based method. Our method achieved similar accuracy but used less computational time as compared with the maximum likelihood based method. And therefore, our method is a better candidate for deriving initial structure models from large numbers of subtomograms. And we thank the funding support, and I will hold my poster session soon at 6 o'clock, and I will present two deep learning-based work for, for subtomogram analysis tasks. Thank you. Thank you.